G'day to all you lovely people and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you haven't been here before. I'm Kathy, and today I want to put the spotlight on one of my favorite plants in my home anyway, and that is the macho fern, Nephrolepis biserata. Now I'm sure I mispronounced that, but that is the best I can do. That is the Latin name anyway for the macho fern. I have had my macho fern for well over 18 months and it has done extremely well in my home. So I wanted to share my care tips with you. I'm also going to give you a bit of detail about the actual macho fern itself. Let's start off with the genus and that is Nephrolepis which is usually the genus for most ferns that you see in our homes. Apparently, Nephrolepis means kidney scale. There are fossil records that ferns have been around for over 360 million years. That's million years. They have been around a hell of a lot longer than humanity has. Most of the species and families that we see today though only date back 160 odd million years <laughs> still a very very long time the species is biserata the macho fern is also known as the sword fern the species was first identified by wh shot in 1834 the macho fern is endemic to Florida, West Indies, Central and South America, as well as Asia. And in fact, is quite often mistaken for the Boston fern. I call the macho fern the Boston fern on steroids because it is definitely much larger in shape. They do look very similar. And in fact, when I first bought my macho fern, I thought it was a Boston fern. It was only small though, it was probably so big when I got it. I think it was a 12 centimetres pot and the leaves were quite small. So it was hard to distinguish between the Boston and the macho. If you are not sure if you have a Boston or macho, I would suggest that you look at photos of the macho fern once it is older, because you can definitely tell that the fronds have a different shape. They seem to have more space between each individual leaf. And the Boston seems to have a lot more smaller leaves on each frond. As for growth, they can have fronds that are over a meter long. Mine is close to that I would say. I haven't actually measured each frond but they are huge and yet it continues to grow. This plant <laughs> grows fast. In 18 months that I've had it, it has grown from such a small plant to what you see now. I'll insert some photos here of what it looked like when I first got it, what it looked like a year ago and what it looks like now to give you an indication of the growth habit of this plant. I think it is a fast grower and it grows throughout the year for me. And I absolutely love the new fronds. They are curled up like a, I don't know what to call it, like a frizzle sizzle. And then they slowly extend out. They go up into the air. Eventually the weight of the leaf or frond will drop it over the side of the pot. It is just a gorgeous looking plant. My understanding is that they don't flower, but I could be wrong. I tried to do some research on it, but I wasn't able to clarify whether they flower or not. Now I'm going to go through the care requirements for the macho fern. These are understory plants growing on the ground which are protected from the light or direct sun by the leaves and branches of overhanging trees. 
so they will not do well with direct sun, they will burn. My macho fern sits around one and a half to two meters back from my north facing window. That is the brightest light we get in Australia because we are in the southern hemisphere. For those of you in the northern hemisphere, I think the brightest light you get is from your south facing windows. So keep that in mind. My macho fern is far enough back from the window that it doesn't burn and it seems to love that position. With respect to humidity, because this is a rainforest, tropical plant, of course, the more humidity you can give it, the better it will do. However, I have found that the macho fern does not require very high humidity. I have an open plan house. My living room and kitchen are in the same space where I run my heater in winter. So the humidity levels drop quite a bit during winter in my home. It has not bothered my macho fern. It does not care. I would say that the humidity levels in my kitchen range between 40% to 60 and upwards when it is very humid, usually in spring and summer. But the macho fern copes quite well with humidity levels that are 40% and even lower. It will, of course, appreciate higher humidity, but it is not necessary for it to grow and grow well. Watering. Mm. This is where you can get unstuck with the macho fern. Being a tropical fern, it does not like the soil to dry out too much, nor does it want to be really soggy. With watering, you need to ensure that the soil is evenly moist. If you use a moisture meter, if it starts heading towards the dry section, that is when you need to top up the water. When I first bought mine, I had it just in a regular pot and I noticed that some of the leaves or fronds would brown a little. And I decided to invest in a self-watering pot. It is a pot which has a reservoir down the bottom where excess water will remain and allows the plant to draw up the water as it needs it. In my opinion, that is why I have succeeded with this plant not because I have any great skill, but because it simply loves the self-watering pot. I make sure that the reservoir doesn't dry out and the plant is able to draw up water when it needs it. The plant will also let you know if it wants some water because it might start browning some of the tips or it might look a bit droopy. However, if you can, I would suggest you invest in a self-watering pot. That, I think, is the best tip I can give you in relation to the macho fern. Being a plant that likes its soil to remain moist, this plant would appreciate a soil that retains moisture. Generally speaking, a lot of plants we have like a fast draining soil, I don't think that the macho fern does. When I repot it, which I might have to in spring, I will use a premium potting mix and I think that is sufficient. If you have a peat based mix, that would also work because peat can retain moisture. Repotting. Mm. I have only repotted it the once when I first got it and moved it into the self-watering pot. In my experience, some ferns can be a little bit fussy about repotting. You have to be extremely gentle. I don't know if the macho fern is as sensitive as other plants. I didn't have any difficulties. One method is to 
divide the plant by separating it and then putting one section in one pot and another section in another. The macho fern also has stolons or runners. I have done some reading on these because I was curious. I had seen them on my plant and I wondered what they were. These stolons or runners can actually be used for propagation purposes. You can cut them at the base, allow them to callus and then plant it. Apparently you can also stick them back into the soil and they will root. I actually have not propagated my own macho fern. My understanding though is that it isn't difficult to propagate with the stolons or runners, but as I have no personal experience with it, I can't really tell you one way or the other. I have not pruned my macho fern. Of course, if you have a frond that has browned or died, then yes, you can prune it back. I think all plants appreciate being fertilised, definitely. So I will fertilise mine in spring, summer and autumn. I do not fertilise my plants though during winter. I use a slow release fertilizer and sometimes I'll also give my macho fern a liquid based fish emulsion fertilizer. In addition to which I also spray all of my plants with sea salt, a seaweed extract solution and they love it. My macho fern just goes crazy. <laughs> I actually think that that is another reason why it is so healthy because the sea salt makes it healthier. If you can find sea salt in your area or an alternative, another seaweed extract solution, give it a go. I've had a lot of success with it and my plants just love the stuff. They are known for mealy bug attacks and aphids. I personally have never found aphids inside the house, though I have found them outdoors on outdoor plants. I haven't had any mealy bugs on mine, which I think is just luck more than anything. But if you have an attack of pests, then you'll need to treat it. You don't need to throw it away, just treat it with whatever treatment you have on hand or that you purchase to deal with the pests. Ferns, like a lot of tropical plants, do get brown tips. My macho fern definitely had some brown tips when I first bought it. Now it could have been that it was adjusting to my home because it was in optimal conditions before I bought it, or it could have been that I hadn't quite got the watering right. However, from the moment I put it in the self-watering pot, I do not get brown tips. Another reason you might find brown tips on your fern is that they don't like to be touched too much. If they are squished against something or brushed against something, the fronds or part of the fronds can brown and die off. One of the reasons I have hung my macho fern from the ceiling is so that I wouldn't be tempted to touch it too much because I do like touching my plants and yet the macho fern doesn't like being touched too much. And I suggest that if you have a macho fern, consider hanging it. It will be much happier if people aren't going to be touching it and it has the room to spread out. Another problem you might have with your macho fern is leaf tip burn when it has been over fertilized. So clearly less is more. It is better to be safe than sorry. So I try to give them less than the recommended dose just to be on the safe side. My macho fern is definitely a favorite of mine. Everyone who walks into my home notices it immediately and loves it. And I don't blame them because so do I. It makes a big impact. 
it reminds you of tropical rainforests. It's the quintessential rainforest plant, isn't it? Well, that is all the care tips I have. I'm sure I've left something out. And if you have any tips that I haven't included in this video, please do put it down in the comments for the benefit of others. I also hope that you have found some of the care tips I've given useful. Let me know if you have a macho fern and how you have found growing it. For me, it is definitely one of the easiest plants I own. But as I said, I put that down to the self-watering pot. Thank you all very much for watching this video. And if you found it useful, then you can give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, do consider subscribing to my channel as it helps my channel to grow. I hope you all have a beautiful day and I'll see you next time. Bye.